Asalaamu Alaikum. I do apologise for this speech as it is not up to scratch because I have been busy with exams and I still have one more left, so please pray for me. And good luck to anyone who still has exams or has recently taken some. As you might remember, my previous speech was about the importance of mothers in Islam. So this time I decided I would speak about the importance of fathers in Islam, especially as Father's Day is approaching. In the Islamic family system, it has been said that the father is considered as the head of the household. Whenever people form a group, they must also have a leader. For example, a football team needs a captain, a school needs a head teacher, or like a family needs a father. As the head of the family, it is the father's responsibility to provide the necessities of life, for, for example, food, clothing, shelter, for his dependents, his children, his wife, and in some cases, his elderly parents. I would now like to say a quote about fathers in Islam. It is the right of your father to realise that he is your root and you are his branch, and that without him you would have been non-existent. Therefore, whenever you find in yourself anything that is likeable, remember that your father is the basic means of that gift of Allah to you, and be thankful to Allah and grateful to your father accordingly. I thought this would link nicely to my next point, which is that fathers are sometimes underrated. There is so much importance put on mothers. For example, they held you in their womb for nine months, raised you, etc. Obviously that is important, don't get me wrong. But fathers also helped with this process and sometimes are forgotten. But a believing father is a role model who leads you in prayers, takes you to the mosque and shows you by his actions that Islam is a way of life even though he still has to do the mundane task of doing the school run and taking me to the orthodontist. All in all, what I'm trying to say is that both parents are equally important. My next quote links to the statement. Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of contempt, nor repel them, but address them in terms of honour. I also want to say a hadith which relates to this theme and it is the story of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. In the Quran, it tells us that his father was ready to kill him for destroying religious idols and abandoning his religion. Abraham, instead of losing control, merely prayed to God to have mercy on his father and to help him find the truth. I found this hadith really interesting. And basically what happens is, when Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was young, his father would pray to idols, but the Prophet saw them as toys. And when his father had finished pray with his prayers, the Prophet would play with them and sometimes kick them. Then he would see the same idols in temples and he couldn't understand why people prayed to them when they were mere inanimate objects. When he was older, he received a message from Allah to follow Islam, so naturally he did. He then tried to turn the person closest to him to Islam, which was his father. He said to him in the softest and kindest voice, O oh father, why do you worship that which doesn't hear, doesn't see and cannot avail you in anything? O oh father, I have knowledge which you have not. So follow me, I will guide you to a straight path. His father replied angrily, Do you reject my gods, O Abraham? If you don't stop, I will stone you. Get away from me before I punish you. Abraham said, Peace is on you. I will ask forgiveness of my Lord for you. My final point is respect your mother and your father. Thank you for listening.